Alrighty, checking in about the 65% mark. I'm about two thirds of the way into there and wanted to warn you of something that came to mind while I was working on this is that if you're right handed or left handed, that side is always going to affect your symmetry when you're doing something like this because it's it's just the way it works with tools uh, pushing, pulling tools and stuff like that, you can't help but apply forces slightly out of whack. And uh, in my case, what I've always tended to do is go too far down on the, whichever left or right, I can't remember what you want to call that, but when I'm working on a pipe and if I check the alignment of the button against the top of the bowl by looking down it, I'll have tilted that surface a little bit and if I don't watch out I will rotate the stem in relation to the slot so here you notice look real carefully there's a little black line that I etched or I used a little indelible deal a little black line that's an extension of the slot and it wraps around here and don't neglect to check your alignment this is a totally a subtractive exercise and the minute you get past the future surface plane of where you want the stem to be, if you go past that you're SOL. You have to start over or give it up because there's no putting material back in a case like this. So the very best uh, prevention is to don't trust yourself to uh, feel it intuitively in terms of what's staying aligned and what's not. You'll get to daydreaming while you're filing and next thing you know you're past the point of no return somewhere. So force yourself to stop periodically and check. A good way to do that, even if you have problems with that, get like a kitchen timer that resets every time you touch it, like set it at two minutes or something and then have that ding remind you to uh, examine your lines. So, periodically also it's necessary to clean up the back of the button here because it doesn't cut right up to the crease. But, uh, and none of the files do. But it's starting to shape up really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing this in its finished state. Uh, also, the uh, reason I left this a little bit thicker than uh, necessary is you're going to slowly be eroding the back of the button. It's going to crawl its way forward every time you clean up there, even though you're only going to be hoping to get rid of the, the, the trash, so to speak, that a file leaves. You'll always be cutting into the back of that just a little. So that gives you a bumper, a little safety margin. So once we get down to where we're scrubbing on the tape and uh, the final approach, so to speak, we're going to shift gears away from all of these big heavy files. Uh, it's actually pretty fun when you get going on with these things and you get this, uh, the material actually comes off in little spirally ribbons and stuff like that. So it's fun. If you're using uh, some of the softer varieties of vulcanite, uh, you can really get it flying. This uh, NYH is is pretty hard, so it's not quite as much fun as, as that sandbox, but it it's approaches it. So anyway, there we are at the two-thirds of the way there, Mark, and uh, I will continue and turn this all back on when we're at the next point worthy of consideration. Okay, something else occurred to me. Uh, this is turning into a, like a stream of consciousness sort of a exercise here. While I work on this, as things occur to me, I just reach over and turn the camera back on. Uh, it's that, I, last time around I said, keep on checking, testing your lines, check, 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 don't stop. Uh, don't get in a hypnotic state and go too far. Well, then you come to the question of how do you correct something when you do get it uh, out of sorts. 
out of shape. And it's this is also counterintuitive. Humans have a natural tendency to use tools on a long object in this fashion. The length of, you know, like, it just, it makes sense. I guess it dates back to whittling sticks on the porch with Grandpa or something. I don't know. But even though you'll do a lot of this kind of an angled side-to-side -side thing, to actually go completely from side-to-side -side is not uh, frequently done, it seems like. Yet that is what you want to do when you find a high spot. Let's say, oh, I've got one right there. And I would take out the, the flat file. And here's where you do it in these controlled rollover, push only one direction kind of a thing. And then you test. And I got about half of it. So anyway, it's don't assume that if you spot something that's out of uh, out of uh, uh, like a high spot and you will say, well, I'll just work a little more at it this direction. That's not precise enough. And what you'll find is then you'll often have a, a ripple. You'll have lowered it on each side as well because the tool doesn't know what's high and what's not. And unless you're uh, as accurate as a machine, it there's no way you can regulate this direction to exactly where you want it. So anyway, keep the thing tuned up, check often, and keep it all straight while you're reducing it. Don't assume that, oh, I'll catch, I'll catch up with that error. I'll, I'll start, you know, you got to shrink the whole thing in equal way. You know, it's almost like you want to start with a finished stem and just make it smaller. If you think like that, you'll be on the right track. If you say, well, I'll just go ahead and finish the button now and then carve the rest of the stem to match it, that's not going to, well, I can't say it's not going to work. I'm sure there are people that have done it, in fact, but I would not recommend doing something like that. So it's coming along. I'm really excited to see this pipe finished. I always thought it was, this is like a briar punk rock or something. No, I don't like punk rock, but it's, it makes a statement like very few other pipes do. The prism-like stem and this aggressively tilted, craggy flying saucer bowl. You can't walk into a pipe club meeting without thinking you're making a statement with this thing. So anyway, having fun, getting dirty. But there you go. I'd rather be here than at the beach. Unless there were some really good looking women, I guess. No, I didn't say that. Take care.